first thing we're going to go into for, for the rigging discussion is a look at some common rig issues. And what I mean by that is uh, we see hundreds and hundreds of facial rigs, and I'm not exaggerating. We do, uh, we work with so many different clients, and we have our own rigging team where we build rigs for some of them, but for most of them, they have their own rigging uh, services, and, and they provide us with a rig to do animation on. So the amount of different types of rigs that we see and, uh, you know, different methodologies for building those rigs and different ways they're meant to be used, uh, there's a ton of information that we have, you know, because of that. So kind of the, the purpose of this webinar is not so much to teach you, you know, this is where you put joints, this is how you, you know, skin a mesh and that sort of stuff, because you can find that anywhere. What I want this series to be more about is sort of a general uh, methodology, you know, about how to approach building your facial rig and what we commonly see people forgetting to do or doing, uh, you know, doing too much of and those sort of things that, you know, I guess you could say uh, leveraging the experience of our production team and, and sort of passing that information on to you guys who, you know, uh, we got a pretty good range of people in, in the audience today. We've got a lot of people from the gaming industry, some from the film industry, uh, some from education, uh, who, who I'm imagining are instructors and that sort of thing. So we've got a really wide variety of people here. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you can use this information to apply it to whatever you're doing or, um, you know, that sort of thing. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the rigger versus the animator, which is a pretty, uh, pretty crazy topic. Uh, we might not even get to it today. We might have to push it to the next, uh, the next webinar. But essentially what I mean by that is uh, there's two major rigging philosophies with facial rigs that I've come across in my experience. And the first one is that if you make the rig perfect, then the animator won't be able to mess it up. <laughs> Thus they will have great animation no matter their skill level. Um, but what tends to come with that is a lack of control. So the opposite end of that argument is give the animator everything they need, be able to control every single little tidbit of the face, but then what you end up with is if you put that in the hands of an animator who uh, has less experience, it's a lot easier to go off model and to just make you know, some, some bad animation. So it's kind of like finding a balance between those two major, uh, major things. And then of course we're going to do a QA at the end. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to hop in Maya here and I'm going to show you the character setup tool. Let's see. So this is a uh, facial rig called Victor that we use at Image Metrics, and he's uh, he's actually a hybrid rig, which I'll go into a little more in detail later. Uh, but he's a, a mixture of blend shapes and uh, and joints. So the way you use the character setup tool with Faceware, uh, if you have no idea what Faceware is, it's essentially a, it's a piece of software that you use to retarget animation from a video onto a, onto a, uh, a rig. Now, in order to do that, there's one small step that needs to happen, and that is to sort of uh, define a, a bridge between your character and Faceware, and what we call that is the character setup file. Now, what that means is you have to tell Faceware where the rig controls are. Because uh, essentially all Faceware does is set keyframes. So the TD's job in the beginning is to make this file to essentially tell Faceware which controls it's allowed to use and, uh, and which group they go into. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to File and New. This really doesn't take long. It's, it's quite quick, which is why it's nice for this. Uh, I'm going to give my character a name. So this guy's name is Victor. And then I'm going to start with the eyes because they're nice and simple. So what I have to do is I have to select my eye controls. Now the reason it's usually best to have a TD or you know a, a character setup artist do this is because you need to sort of know which controls to put in which groups. If you just give this to an animator and they start doing it, you know they might not know that this is a brow control and uh, and not part of the eyes. I mean common sense I suppose, but never assume anything. So I'm going to select my eye controls, which on this guy are, he's got two eyelids, controllers, and then the eye direction. And then I just come over here to this button. Let's see, can I use the spotlight and click? No, if I turn that thing on, it won't let me click anything. All right, there we go. So rig controls. If I click that, it brings up this second little dialog here, and I can update it. 
And what it's done is it's thrown every single animatable attribute on those controllers into this window. So from here, uh, if I want to deselect some of them, for example, uh, you're not going to want to retarget the world or the head switcher. And there's a rotation multiplier on the eyelids, which I know they're not going to want to animate. So I'll just deselect the ones I don't want in there. No scale either. And then I just hit Add Selected. And what it's done is to the eyes group right here, it's added all of those attributes. So if we look at what information it's added, it's added uh, the controller name, which is uh, <clears throat> essentially just the path, the script path to the controller. There's also an attribute field over here, which is the same as the name. If I wanted to, I could rename this to you know something more user friendly, like just left blink, for example. But uh, don't need to, you know, because no one ever really looks at it once I make it. So I usually just leave that. It's also defined a minimum and a maximum and a default value for that controller. Now, if, uh, if you've done your animators the favor of uh, normalizing your controls and having them all zero out, then this is almost always going to be zero. However, if you're working on a character rig that's, say, just joints, uh, then maybe the joints are not zeroed out at their default. So what I can do is come down here and just hit the, uh, let's see, set as default value. And what that will do is on any of these controllers, whatever the current value is, it will set it to that. So for example, I could just, with the joints selected, hit that and it will set this to whatever their, uh, whatever their default value is in their, in their local space. So uh, the one thing I do want to do is I want to select all my controllers here, and I'm going to give them a, a bigger minimum and a maximum. I like to give it something really high, like negative 1,000 and 1,000. Now, depending on what shot the animators are working on, this might not be relevant or, or what type of rig it is, but as a habit, I just set it to a huge number so they'll never have to worry about the, uh, the controller not being able to go into a certain range that they're pushing it to. So that's essentially it. I mean, uh, you're going to want to do the same thing with the eyebrows. So select my brows. Oops. My computer's kind of chugging here. Sorry, guys. There we go. Now, uh, the brows group uh, constitutes anything above the eyes. So that would include this uh, forehead controller. And then, any, you know, if I had any hairline controls or anything like that, I would add those in. Same workflow, browse selected, hit rig controls. I'm going to update my window, add selected, and then I would uh, move them in in the max. Now, this uh, character has blend shapes. So how do you add blend shapes? You will come over, depending on where they're keyed, uh, like I could click on the mesh, and you can see the blend shape node. Uh, you can see that they're yellow, meaning that they're connected to something, so that's not what's going to get my keyframes. So, uh, again, being the being the TD, you have to find out, okay, well, where are the keyframes going? And I know on this guy, he's got a uh, a controller up here to, sorry, my little go-to webinar menu's in the way. There we go. Uh, so these are where the keyframes would go on this. So I would actually select this and then bring up my rig controls, update it. But this is just a sort of uh, a generic control that houses all of the blend shapes for this character in this particular case. So I wouldn't want to add them all. I would only want to add the ones that had to do with the eyebrows. So you would have to go through this list and essentially uh, choose the correct shapes and then you would add it in. So uh, that's the only time it ever gets a little bit tricky is when you're you know, just um, trying to figure out which attributes you want to add. Because what's going to happen is if when the animators are animating with Faceware, if you add something in the browse group that actually is in the eyes group, then when they use Faceware to, uh, to key that, it's going to start doing, it's pretty much going to ignore what they did and they're not going to understand why. So um, if you ever get your hands on Faceware, I don't know, uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, I saw from the survey have tried Faceware before, but if you haven't and uh, you give it a, give it a try, um, that will make a little bit more sense. So uh, that's pretty much it for the, uh, the quick faceware part. <laughs> Again, they sponsor these, so you know we do want to at least show you guys what it is and that sort of thing. If you have any more questions about that at the end, then feel free to jump in. Uh, so now I want to get into more about the actual facial rigging stuff.
So, uh, <clears throat> let's see, I made some notes here, so I don't leave anything out. Okay, so what I did was uh, I talked to our animation team because, like I said in the beginning, uh, we've seen hundreds of facial rigs, and our team produces thousands of minutes a year of facial animation. Uh, that's no small feat. They know what they're doing. Um, even though some of our animators are, uh, you know, only have a year or two of experience in some cases, um, the fact that they focus just on facial animation all day and studying facial gestures and expressions and how to make things read better and that sort of thing sort of gives them an edge um, to, you know, to the point where, you know, their, their opinions on, on how to, you know, what they need out of a rig and what they need it to do and, and what they need to make it work are, are very valid, you know, so it's, it's nice uh, to talk to them and it's also nice to talk to our seniors, you know, some of the people who have 10 plus years of experience to really sort of get, a, get an idea of what they're looking for and then sort of compare the two, you know, compare what the juniors are asking for to what the seniors are asking for. And I, it's really interesting, I think, to kind of, you know, to see once they have all that experience, ha have their needs changed, you know, have they sort of, uh, you know, realized that there are certain things that aren't as important as they thought or, or what. Um, generally, there are some things that always sort of cross over, you know, stuff that they, uh, that they always want. And that's the stuff I wrote down that I really wanted to share with you guys today. Um, so the first thing is, and this was the major thing, almost every single person I asked had this, uh, this to say about facial rigs, and that is don't skimp out on the upper face. Um, what we see a lot is a lot of emphasis put on the mouth, the lower face, you know, making the, the deformations in the jaw perfect and, you know, lots of... Uh, lots of time and effort spent around the mouth and getting the mouth and lip sync to, to read nicely. Um, but a lot of people are sort of not putting as much time and as much heart into the upper face. And, you know, we, we are guilty of that as well. Like we, uh, you know, doing lip sync and animating lip sync is very complex because there's a lot of facial muscles. You know, if you have studied the fax system, you will know, uh, you know, that making the face do what the facial muscles can do on a real person is extremely difficult. So you sort of, you spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, how the heck do I do that? How do I make it look good? How do, you know, while still staying within the budgets of, um, you know, memory-wise, if you're working on a game, you, you always have extreme uh, limitations. Or even if you're working on a film, you know, you can't put a thousand blend shapes in a rig to make it work because it's going to be so slow, no one's going to want to use it. You know, so you have to kind of find a, you know, a uh, sort of a, a balance somewhere. And so that being said, uh, some of the things they often don't get on the facial, or sorry, on the upper face in facial rigs is, uh, let's see, the first thing, <laughs> actually, hold on, I'm going to bring this down a second. I'm going to pull up a camera. 